Hi, welcome to the video training series on Embrilliance Essentials. I'm Lindy Goodall of Lindy G Embroidery and today we'll be making a quilt label using essentials. This video was prompted by a question recently emailed to me, so let's get started. First, some considerations. If we look at this design, you'll see that I have all of my quilt information on this label. My amazingly incredible quilt, who it was designed by, who it was pieced by, who it was quilted by, and a little dedication for who it's for. If I move into the window here, you will see that I have a hoop size of 500 by 200 millimeters. So I don't know about you, but I don't have a hoop that big. I can't sew this design like this. And although we could use software to split it up, I don't recommend it on text because it's too easy to get the lines squiggly. Now, what if we just make the text smaller? Well, that would be the temptation to make this text really small so that it would fit our largest sewing field. But I want you to understand what small is as far as embroidered letters. I really consider small to be anything less than a half an inch or 12 millimeters tall, especially for a font like this. And really tiny text would be, say, six millimeters, and that would be for the best case situation of Helvetica or Arial. If you want five millimeter letters, you're going to have to have all uppercase letters in a very simple basic font like Helvetica or Arial. Now if you have a really small sewing field, you're going to have to really simplify your label. So you're probably only going to get your name and possibly the date and hope that your name isn't really, really long. So let's look back at our label that I finished. And you can see that I've used two fonts here. I've used a script style font and I've used a basic block font for the smaller letters. So um, this will have to be larger, but that's where I want my emphasis. I want the emphasis on the name of my quilt rather than on my name and the date. This little corner element was one that we created in a previous video. In fact, the actual one we created was this one. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to bring in one of these corner elements and then we're going to add some text. So let's get started. The design I want to use is already open so let's just go over here and copy it. So command C, come back here, paste, command V and there it is. I'm just going to move it up there in the corner and then I'm going to copy and paste it again, Command C, Command V, and it's stacked it on top of itself. And we know that because we can see it selected here and we can see the other ones right there. And what I want to do now is I want to mirror it. So I'll just flip it that way and line it up down here. Now to make sure they're really lined up, I'm going to hold down the Command key and select them both. We can actually do just Command A. And I want to do a line. So let's align those. And we want to align on the right side. Click Apply. And there we go. And let's group that. Command G. Remember I said learning keyboard shortcuts is the fastest way to speed up your computer. So let's copy and paste again. And flip that. Move that over here. Select all, Command A, we'll align those along the top. And uh, it's probably a good idea to save this. And now let's um, add some text. So I'm going to click on the lettering tool and I'll type in my name and uh, June 2012. Let's scroll this up a bit so we can get more down here. And I want to center that. And we'll set. And that's a little big, so I'm going to shrink it a little bit. Not a whole lot. And since our label is kind of light, it doesn't matter if my text goes over it. Now let's add uh, some more lettering. And we'll just type in my quilt. And let's pick a new font. So we have a, a nice selection of fonts. The purple ones are the ones that come with Embrilliance. 
and the red ones are ones that I'm developing so they'll be available soon you can pick China Cat or one of my favorites I know that's just scrolling off the screen and you can't see it until it gets set is this one And let's uh, adjust the spacing here a bit and shrink that down some. That's pretty much all you do to create a quilt label. You bring in your frame or your border and you add some text to it. Now sometimes you might hear that we should do the middle stuff first and then the outer parts last and you might also hear rule that lettering should always be done last. The reason we would run lettering last is if we have a really heavy dense design it has a tendency to pull the fabric and so you may end up with your text being on a wavy baseline. That's not going to be an issue here. So it's not a big deal whether you do the center first and then the, the border or the border first and then the center. Now the nice thing with Embrilliance is that let's say that we really like this style label and we want that to sort of become our our standard label. All I have to do is save this and then the next time I come in here I can open it up and I can just change this text. I don't have to replace it in any way uh, in any sort of way. So in other programs sometimes you have to delete the text block and type in whatever it is you want in a whole, totally new text block. This one, because I can just retype, it's retained all of my settings. It knows that it's centered, it knows that I changed the spacing, it saves me a lot of time once I have it initially set up. So I hope this gives you some ideas on how to create some quilt labels or maybe some postcards and essentials and give it a shot. Play around with this software. This software has a lot of possibilities and you can be very creative. The sky's the limit.